in an Upanishad, the nature of Brahman is defined as satyam jnanam anantam, the true, the knowledge, the infinite. In the Upanishads as well, the self is defined as sat jit ananda being consciousness bliss. The very same was declared by the Maharshi in the booklet, Who Am I? That that awareness which remains after the negation of all else is of the nature of sat jit ananda being consciousness bliss. The very same truth is declared by Ribu many times over, by Shankara and others. These same sages, these same Vedic texts, declare the nature of the self and the nature of Brahman to be one and the same thing, that the self is Brahman. From this we can understand that sat, existence or being, is the truth, satyam, and that chit, consciousness, is jnanam, the knowledge, and that the perfectly full happiness, ananda, is to be found in the infinite, anantam. How is it to be found? In satsang a few weeks ago, there was a recitation from an Upanishad that said, that tapas is Brahman. One should attain or know Brahman by tapas. What is this tapas? In the English translation read aloud during that recitation, tapas was translated as concentration. It is good, provided, well know, <clears throat> provided we know, that such concentration signifies a withdrawal from the illusion of multiplicity and an undivided focus on that which is absolutely one. Tapas also conveys a sense of literally heat, fiery practice, fiery in the sense of having the ability to burn up the dross of ignorance, as well as being illuminating. What is that fiery practice that burns up all else? so that reality remains. The Upanishadic text said, tapas is Brahman. No, seek to know Brahman by tapas. From this we can understand that the means and the end are the same. because it is Brahman and is by this means that one knows Brahman, that is, one realizes Brahman. What then is this tapas? Often it is understood to mean some kind of austerity, but really it should be comprehended as doing without illusion, 
being without ignorance, being without this world. In this sense, there is nothing bodily about it. How is ignorance to be burned up? By knowledge, by knowledge alone. And what kind of knowledge is this? If it's knowledge that is Brahman, it most certainly cannot be a thought. It can neither be a perception nor a conception. The knowledge that is Brahman is the means to realize Brahman. The knowledge or consciousness that is your existence is the light by which you know existence. Parvati is said to have done intense tapas and thereby was blessed with the state of being undifferentiated from Shiva, symbolized in Ardhanarishwar. How to arrive at that state in which the entire manifested experience is in complete union with the formless absolute truth. That is how to realize that in which there is one undifferentiated existence without beginning without end, without division or duality of any kind. Such tapas of the nature of knowledge can only be a profound inquiry to know oneself. Aside from inquiring to know oneself, how else could ignorance in the form of misidentification that makes one think one is separate from Brahman be eliminated? Other than thought transcendent inquiry, which from the start is free from duality. What other kind of concentration could be Brahman and result in the realization of Brahman? other than the austerity of doing without illusion, what other kind would result in what is eternal, let alone that which is blissful?
therefore, to realize that blissful truth, declared to be the only reality by numberless sages, inquire within yourself to determine what in truth you actually are. Abandon the tendency to misidentify. Attain non-attachment or complete dispassion by knowing the source and nature of happiness, which is one's own self. Inquire, who am I? It is not a bodily practice. It's a practice that sets you free of misidentification with the body. Inquire, who am I? It is not a mental practice. Rather, it reveals the non-existence of a separate entity to be called the mind. Inquire, who am I? It does not belong to the ego, but questions the very existence of the ego to reveal the one self which actually alone exists eternally. that absolute knowledge or pure consciousness that appears in the form of self-inquiry in spiritual practice is the very same knowledge that constitutes the realization in self-realization. Ramana sings that abidance as the self is good tapas. Engage in such. Abide as that.
Thank you, Master. Hearing the, uh, that um, the austerity is the relinquishing of the illusion brings to mind almost a, uh, a reverse jest that sometimes shows up in the teaching where the one who forgoes true happiness is the actual renunciate, a fruitless and legalist renunciate. And that in turn also brings me brings to mind uh, what I might clumsily try to describe as a sort of a false modesty or honesty where there's a thought, well, honestly, I believe I'm bound. And that seems like such a false honesty or modesty. It has that same flavor of being an inversion that's needless. Before making a claim that you are bound, first find out. You need not declare yourself to others or in your own mind to be bound or to be free. Just find out. So you're saying it's the, the goal is knowledge, not proclamation one way or the other. You're free to proclaim, but first find out what you're proclaiming. By an absence of definition, one knows oneself. Consider deep dreamless sleep. When in deep sleep, you do not retain any idea that you are bound. Even the idea that you are free is missing. Yet you exist and very happily so. free without either idea. What is found accidentally in deep sleep should be realized deeply and thoroughly even now. From the point of view of an individual, it might seem that um, engaging in tapas would be um, an activity or having a time and place. And 
perhaps competing or part of or alongside other activities. But in listening to the teaching, that doesn't seem to be the case. But if the experience is that, as such, whether a deliberate effort or hitting myself, it's or coming to myself at certain times throughout the day <clears throat> on its own, can it, we at least say that's a valid starting point? In such practice, what is your intention? What is your aim? the first thing that arises is to fully understand the teaching. And you wish to fully understand the teaching for what reason? Almost as if it's an intuition that there's something very wonderful in the teaching. Then the aim is a good one, and it's a fine starting place. That which you're making a deliberate effort for will be found in the course of such effort to be actually natural, to be of your very existence. That for which you're setting aside certain times of the day for deliberate spiritual activity will be found in the course of such to be everlasting and continuous because it's of the nature of your own true self. Such spiritual effort is very worthwhile and not a drop of it ever goes in vain. Then I guess if there's a period of time where it doesn't seem like there's spiritual effort, that could be looked into. Are you happy with such? Then the quest for happiness will drive you further inward. The desire for happiness becomes the desire for liberation, or self-realization as we call it. Such desire becoming intense, spending time 
from the old tendencies of illusion no longer makes sense, becomes uncomfortable, too tight a space to fit into. Again, it is very worthwhile spiritual practice to discern when you are in ignorance and why. That questioning the reason why will lead you back to what you regard as your identity. For the modes of mind are based upon identification. What you regard as yourself assumes the form of various mental tendencies, none of which are natural, the destruction of which is the purpose of spiritual practice. It is the destruction of ignorance, illusion, not something real. But by such, happiness is uncovered. It was there all the time, but veiled by the ignorance. So as much as you can, discern keenly what in truth you are, as proclaimed by the teaching and what you're taking yourself to be at any moment. Compare and contrast, and then inquire as to what in truth you are. been trying to reflect on Ramna's instruction to his mother, uh, let whatever happen, happen. But I guess the problem is that it's not soaked in into me as much. It's, it's still something that I reflect on and it feels nice to listen to it, to keep reflecting on it over and over again. But I'm not able to let go of the worry. I guess you kind of answered it in your in, in this in the previous answer too. You need to see what is it that I'm taking as my identity. But somehow I know what you mean by that, but I but I still don't know what it means. I'm, I guess I'm not very clear, but it's how can I just let go? What should I do to just let go of all the troubles and? In the midst of these troubles, it's sometimes there is a feeling that I should just I should just go away, I should just disappear. But I guess disappearing from the situation is is not the solution. If you disappear from the situation, you will still appear to you. How can you really disappear? 
such complete disappearance is indicated by the Maharshi's answer to his mother, the final sentence, the best course therefore is to remain silent. The nature of that silence is that in which there is no wrong identity, no I, no I notion, no ego. If you can disappear like that, all will be well. It is not circumstances that pull you out of the peace of the self. It is the thinking in your mind. This can easily be seen by the fact that even if circumstances are not problematic, if you start thinking about them with memory, for example, something that's problematic, the peace will be disturbed, won't it? <clears throat> Conversely, if you find the root of peace and abide steadily there, even if circumstances are problematic, your peace will remain. The experience hinges entirely upon what you regard as your identity. either inquire and thereby have the ego disappear entirely <clears throat> and remain as that which is space-like and unaffected, or recognize the all-powerful one as God, as Guru, and surrendering to that, become void of the sense of me and mine. If you surrender fully, it's as good as not being there. Even if you're physically in that very disturbing situation. stops and I'm back into the, I have to jump back into the problem. Are you making your happiness dependent upon something in this world? If that one tendency ceases, happiness will stay where it really is, inside you, and no problem you will gain thereby the necessary dispassion or detachment that's sufficient to deal with any circumstance. Yes, it's essential. It's that old simple question, where is happiness? It's simple, but it's so important to know it through and through. reason out that that a particular object doesn't give me happiness, even if I get that object or even if that situation, that happiness comes from me only, it doesn't come from the situation. Just like you have, you have told us. 
but it's it's at that level i am i do not even take it deeper than that why is even after that means it's because i don't feel that knowledge stay with me but even then you still yearn for happiness where are you going to find it it does exist but where is it to be found First ascertain with certainty and real depth so that you feel it, not just think it, where happiness is, what its source is, what its nature is. You will find it to be within, just as all who have succeeded before you have found it to be there. then abiding within, knowing what is within, becomes of paramount importance. Who am I? If you inquire deeply, you will see that you are not in the circumstance. The circumstance only appears within you. You are not some embodied, limited person. The happiness has its root in the self, and that self is the eternal, the infinite, the pure consciousness. Regard the entire personal life, including the troublesome circumstances, is no more than a dream. That's not what you are. That's not where you are. Identifying with the space-like consciousness, you'll be at peace. And nothing and no one will be able to shake that just as one cannot shake space. Even if someone pushes the space, the space is not hurt. Space-like is your real self. And it is peace itself because of its changelessness. It lacks nothing. It's perfect. Wake up from the dream of being a personality. That's not what you are. From the vantage point of this expansive perspective, what does it matter what appears to go on? What does it matter if someone says such and such or does such and such? It is like asking, what does it matter what the people in last night's dream did? It was just a dream. The reality is of a transcendent nature. And that reality is your real home. 
go there, disappear there. Even to hear its description feels so peaceful. I can imagine if I, if I know myself as that, it can be the source of peace. Then the spark is lit, fan it into a great flame by practice. recent dialogue I had a very clear experience of what self abidance is very clear and it became clear by simply observing is not the right word but it's just like letting myself merge with what you're abiding in. And in doing that, I said to you, this is home for you, isn't it? And you responded, no departure. And when you said that, I knew where my home was. And when you ask God, what is your intention? Every time I come here, every time I meditate, it's to come home and to stay. With pure intention, one turns within and inquires. Inquiring, he reaches his true home. Having reached his true home, one finds that there was never actually a departure. It was only Maya illusion that made the reality seem otherwise. Consider the Maharshi's analogy of someone falling asleep in the satsang hall, dreaming that he is elsewhere and making every effort to return to the satsang hall, which indeed he never actually left. If I ask myself, did I depart?
I find there isn't a departure point. Better to ask who would depart. That approach takes care of the whole concept of departure. about tapas and uh, concentration. You know, when you're talking with Sankita about knowing that place of happiness, I, I kind of thought about, oh yeah, because you said <coughs> concentration should be understood to be non-objective. Or something. I don't remember exactly, but essentially. That's right. The withdrawal from the objectified multiplicity and the focus being one pointed upon the non objective interior knowledge. So that ability <coughs> seems like it would come knowing exactly that there wouldn't be any any true knowledge or happiness of the objective. Yes, what's true, what is knowledge, and what is happiness belong to the real self. They can't belong to an illusion. It's not that one turns away from real things. Rather, one turns away from concocting the idea in his mind that things are real. Yeah, it's a belief, yeah, because... It's not that one austerely does without something that's joyful. Rather, he finds the real source of happiness and he loses interest in all else. Jay brought up a good point about you know, not believing in this. I don't remember his question exactly, but you know, this belief in the inquirer as something that's separate from the inquiry itself. But in a sense, you know, because if I believe it, that it's real in some way, myself, whatever, the world, it's never going to work. But it seems like that's what goes on, right? When So put effort into that. And I'm going, okay, um, here I am standing as something defined as the mind. And it's amorphous, and, but that's the state, and the mind has all the stuff. And anyway. That's the belief. And if one has that belief, he appears as if bound. But the core of belief, or the root of it, what is that? That which declares, this is so, this is real, what is that?
mixed up with the ideas in the mind, it comes out as if limited. But trace it to its root. From where does the sense of reality derive? believed to be something specific, but it seems like that would just be a notion. That reality would still be before that, or encompassing it. What you believe appears to become. What is belief without the what part? just as the knowledge essence coupled with some objective notion comes out as a thought or a set of thoughts without the objective part what remains of that consciousness similar is it with belief Be able to see that is important, or to be able to, because you see it very clearly. The nature of the self is indeed self evident. Is there another self? that would not see it clearly? Yeah, definitely there's... <laughs> there's definitely no reason that see it clearly. <laughs> then question him. <laughs> question him and get to the core of his existence. It will be found to be the same one there being only one being. And all apparent divisions or separation from it is just imagination. If you believe in imagination, it appears as if real. If you keenly inquire, what is imagined vanishes, being unreal, and the imagination itself proves rootless.
ಇಮಾಹ ಸೌಮ್ಯ ನದ್ಯ ಪುರಸ್ತಾತ್ ಪ್ರಾಚ್ಯ ಸ್ಯಂದಂತೆ ಪಶ್ಚಾತ್ ಪ್ರತೀಚಸ್ತಾಹ ಸಮುದ್ರಾತ್ ಸಮುದ್ರಮೇವ ಆಪಯಂತಿ ಸ ಸಮುದ್ರ ಎವ ಭವತಿ ತಿಧುರ್ಯಂ ಅಹಮಸ್ಮೀಯಂ ಅಹಮಸ್ಮೀತಿ ಎವಮೇವ ಖಲು ಸೌಮ್ಯಮಾಹ ಸರ್ವಾ ಪ್ರಜಾ ಸತ ಆಗಮ್ಯ ನ ವಿದು ಸತ ಆಗಾಮಃ ಇತಿತ ಇಹ ವ್ಯಾಘ್ರೋ ವಾ ಸಿಗುಂಹೋ ವಾ ವೃಕೋ ವಾ ವರಾಹೋ ವಾ ಕೀಟೋ ವಾ ಪತಂಕೋ ವಾ ದಗುಂಶೋ ವಾ ಮಶಕೋ ವಾ ಯದ್ಯದ್ಭವಂತಿ ತದಾಭವಂತಿ ಓ ಗುಡ್ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಒನ್ ದೀಸ್ ಈಸ್ಟ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ರಿವರ್ಸ್ ಫ್ಲೋ ಟು ದಿ ಈಸ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ರಿವರ್ಸ್ ಫ್ಲೋ ಟು ದಿ ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ದೇ ರಾಯ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಸಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮರ್ಜ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಸಿ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ they become one with the sea as they do not realize i am this river i am this river in this very way indeed o oh good looking one all these creatures have come from existence do not realize we have come from existence whichever creatures they were here in this world whether tiger lion wolf pig insect grasshopper gadfly or mosquito they become that saya esho animaita datma medagam sarvam tat satyagam sa atma tattvamasi shweta keto iti bhuya eva evameva bhagavan vijnapayitvidi tatha somyeti hovaja that which is this subtle essence all this has got that as the self that is the truth that is the self thou art that o svetika tu may the venerable sir explain to me again he said let it be so o good looking one asya somya mahato vrikshasya yo mule bhyahanya jeevan srevedyo ಮಧ್ಯೇಭ್ಯಾಹನ್ಯ ಜೀವನ್ ಸ್ರೇವೇದ್ಯೋ ಅಗ್ರೇಭ್ಯಾಹನ್ಯ ಜೀವನ್ ಸ್ರೇವೇತ್ಸ ಏಷ ಜೀವೇನಾತ್ಮನುಪ್ರಭೂತ ಪೇಪೀಯಮಾನೋ ಮೋದಮಾನಸ್ತಿಷ್ಟತಿ ಓ ಗುಡ್ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಒನ್ ಇಫ್ ಎನಿ ಒನ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೈಕ್ಸ್ ಎಟ್ ದಿ ರೂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬಿಗ್ ಟ್ರೀ ಇಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸೂಡ್ಸ್ ಜ್ಯೂಸ್ ವಾಲ್ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಇಫ್ ಒನ್ ಶುಡ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೈಕ್ ಎಟ್ ದಿ ಮಿಡಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸೂಡ್ಸ್ ಜ್ಯೂಸ್ ವಾಲ್ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ If one should strike at the top it exudes juice while living this one as such pervaded by the individual soul continues happily while drinking the sap asya eda yadekagam shakham jeevo jahatyata sa shushyati dvitiyam jahatyata sa shushyati tritiyam jahatyata sa shushyati sarvam jah jah jahati sarvah shushyati if the individual soul discards any one of the branches of this tree then that dries up if he discards a second branch then that one dries up if he discards a third then that one dries up when he leaves the whole the whole dries up ಏವಮೇವ ಖಲು ಸೌಮ್ಯ ವಿಧೀತಿ ಹೋವಾಚ ಜೀವಾಪೇತ ವಾವ ಕಿಲೇದ ಮ್ರಿಯತೆ ನ ಜೀವೋ ಮ್ರಿಯತ ಇತಿ ಸಯ ಏಷೋ ಅಣಿಮಯಿ ತದಾತ್ಮ್ಯಮಿದಗಂ ಸರ್ವಂ ತತ್ ಸತ್ಯಗಂ ಸ ಆತ್ಮ ತತ್ವಮಸಿ ಶ್ವೇತಕೇತೋ ಇತಿ ಭೂಯ ಏವಮ ಭಗವಾನ್ ವಿಜ್ಞಾಪಯತ್ವತಿ ತಥಾ ಸೌಮ್ಯೇತಿ ಹೋವಾಚ ಓ ಗುಡ್ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಒನ್ know this verily as such said he this surely dies when separated from the individual soul but the soul does not die that which is this subtle essence all this has got that as the self that is the truth that is the self thou art that o svetika tu
ಅಂಗುಟ್ರಂದಿದಶಕ್ತಿಲ್ಲಾಮಾರಮಾಗೌರುಮಾಯಾಶಕ್ತಿಂಗುಟ್ರದನಾಲಸ್ವರೂಪ
आगम ब्रह्म भावनया लोभ मोहम अखिल मुमे आगम ब्रह्म भावनया मदमान अखिल मुमे आगम ब्रह्म भावनया डम गर्व अखिल मुमे आगम ब्रह्म भावनया मनोदोष अखिलुमे नसिम ब्रह्म भावनया महापाव अखिलुमे नसिम अहम ब्रह्म भावनया मनो दुख अखिलुमे नसिम अहम ब्रह्म भावनया महाभय अखिलुमे नसिम अहम ब्रह्म भावनया तीर्थ स्नान अखिलुमे नसिम अहम ब्रह्म भावनया दैव सेव अखिलुमे नसिम अहम ब्रह्म भावनया ध्यान पूज अखिलुमे नसिम अहम ब्रह्म भावनया जप तप अखिलुमे नसिम अहम ब्रह्म भावनया मंत्र तंत्र अखिलुमे नसिम अहम ब्रह्म भावनया मरव कर्म अखिलुमे नसिम अहम ब्रह्म भावनया मरेकूल अखिलुमे नसिम अहम ब्रह्म भावनया मनोमयक अखिलुमे नसिम अहम ब्रह्म भावनया पुण्य अखिलुमे नसिम अहम ब्रह्म भावनया लोकम अखिलुमे नसिम अहम ब्रह्म भावनया अखिलुमे नसिम अहम ब्रह्म भावनया द्वैत तोत्रम अखिलुमे नसिम अहम ब्रह्म भावनया इधर सत् अखिलुमे नसिम अहम ब्रह्म भावनया इधर पाण अखिलुमे नसिम अहम ब्रह्म भावनया इधर इनब अखिलुमे नसिम अहम ब्रह्म भावनया इधर संगम अखिलुमे नसिम अहम ब्रह्म भावनया माया मोहम अखिलुमे नसिम अहम ब्रह्म भावनया मन ग्रंथि अखिलुमे नसिम अहम ब्रह्म भावनया नादि व्याधि अखिलुमे नसिम अहम ब्रह्म भावनया लियासम अखिलुमे नसिम अहम ब्रह्म भावनया जागीरादि अवस्थयलाम नसिम अहम ब्रह्म भावनया लनादियान अज्ञान नसिम अहम ब्रह्म भावनया भवपास अखिलुमे नसिम अहम ब्रह्म भावनया भावा भाव 
அனவரதம்ந்திடலாமையமில்லைந்திடலாமையமில்லைந்திடலாமையமில்லைந்திடலாமையமில்லைந்திடலாமையமில்லைந்திடலாமையமில்லைந்திடலாமையமில்லைந
அத்தியந்த கருணையினால் அறைந்தான் என்றே தவ்வீடா மனதுடைய முனிவர்க்கெல்லாம் தகமை மிகும் சூத முனி சாற்றினானால் என்றுமெங்குள்ள எப்பொருள் யாவையும் ஏகமாம் பரம பர நானெனும் துன்றுமைக்கிய பாவனை செய்ததால் துகண் மனத்தின் விகற்பம் மனைத்துமே வென்று பூரண போதம் பொருந்தினால் விமல முக்தி அடைந்திடலாமெனன் என்றும் பூரண போதம் பொருந்தினால் விமல முக்தி அடைந்திடலாமெனன் அன்றுளானந்த தாண்டவம் மாடுனம் மாசிலி சன்ன கண்டஸ்வரூபமே அன்றுளானந்த தாண்டவம் மாடுனம் மாசிலி சன்ன கண்டஸ்வரூபமே மாசிலி சன்ன கண்டஸ்வரூபமே